Yo dudes, here we are at Lilybrook. So today is breaking a hundred for somebody who never has. And if you don't think some of the stuff in here applies to you with your 19 handicap, you're wrong. There's plenty in here that applies to everybody. I can only relate to how I started. I joined Gloucester Golf Club August 1988. I had a full bag of brand new clubs and I very quickly found I couldn't hit any of the woods. I was a huge slicer. So the woods went in the cupboard and they stayed there for 16 months. And for 16 months all I used was a 3-iron. Now not many sets have a 3-iron these days so today I'm going to use the 19 degree hybrid not sure why it's called a hybrid. I mean, there's no doubt that that is. It's a little wood, but it's got a lighter shaft and it's much easier to use than a three iron. And the head shape pulls the center of gravity low and back. So that helps get the ball in the air. So this is a considerably easier option than when I was hitting a three iron. The other thing I did was get some lessons. Now the way I did it was I dedicated my first 18 months of golf to lesson, practice, play, practice, play, practice, play. I practiced as much as I played because you're learning. You don't need to practice so much when you're a damn good golfer, but when you're learning you need to practice a lot. Now you might be interested in my first round of golf. It was a par 70, I was playing the yellow tees, so it was about 5,600 yards, and I shot 135. That's 65 over par. That's almost double the par of the golf course. So, you know, I've done it all. If there's a mistake to be made, I've done it many, many times over. So today we're gonna have a look at how we tackle a golf course with just a three iron, how we stay out of trouble. Now if I was to look at your card, your 34 over par, I think we'd see eights, nines, tens, elevens. So getting better isn't about making more pars, it's about getting rid of the big numbers. And hopefully today I'll help you get rid of the big numbers. Now before I carry on, I want to mention the grip, how you grip a golf club. If you hang your hands down at rest and then just lift them up, this is where we grip the golf club, in the fingers, just as our hands at rest are. And this thumb, you know, your left hand is a little right of centre and your right hand a little left of centre, just how you'd hold a hammer or push a wheelbarrow. How somebody gets this, I don't know. There's one poor bastard on YouTube who's watched every how to cure your slice, strengthen your grip video on YouTube, and he's ended up with a four knuckle grip. And he puts his right hand on underneath the shaft with his thumb down the right hand side. I can't even hold my hand there. It's uncomfortable. My hand wants to come back to this at rest position and that's important about the grip is you grip the club with your at rest position so go see a pro get yourself sorted out get some lessons and practice what you're taught and remember that practice is going to be 50 percent of your future for at least 12 months let's go to the tee shall we but first warm up go and hit 27 irons Go and find out what my aim is today, what my grip is today, what my posture is today, what direction the ball is going today. Then you can go to the first tee, and your first tee shot is not going to be a surprise to you, because you've just rehearsed it. So here's the plan. Every hole we're going to identify the worst case scenario and avoid it. The worst case scenario of this tee shot is the big tree down the right hand side. But we can't reach it with this club. So we can swing away 
nice and easy and we find that the fairway is quite a wide target. And that reduces the pressure. Now the worst case scenario here is missing right and going out of bounds but as it happens the left hand bunker is GUR at the moment. So I'm just going inside that bunker and when I say inside I mean just to the right so I can run down onto the green. Now this is such an important part of the game the part that you really need to practice and that's just simple chipping and running with a pitching wedge or a 9-iron. Read the shot just like you would a putt aim accordingly and then when you start getting the length right then you start getting it close. Sadly in my case not quite close enough. Yeah, I'm not too sure if the hollow tines affected that or not. Now you've all seen me having trouble with this second hole. The worst case scenario is in the trees on the left. So I'm going to aim down the right here. And because I've got a little extra loft in my hand and a shorter shaft, I can actually control this better and with a much longer club. And I've quite surprised myself there, because that has flown. Right, we've got a bunker left, we've got this big tree to the right. I'm not taking on the green. What I want to do is to get this thing on the ground before the green and stop short of the trouble. So I'm taking a 7 iron here. I know it's going to land soft and it's going to land short of all the trouble. Well, I got a little bit further than I'd planned to. But because I had an easy to hit club in my hand, I managed to hit it straight. And with this hole being stroke five, we get two shots. So that is for a net eagle. Third hole, worst case scenario, is deep in the trees on the right. I don't want to go in the sand either. So I'm taking a club here that isn't going to reach anything. And it's stroke seven, so you get two shots. This is a 200 yard par five. And if you change your thinking about what the par is, you'll find it takes all the pressure off you. I got about 25 yards here. Now remember, at the moment, we're not trying to make you score pars and birdies. We're trying to get rid of sevens, eights, nines and tens. So a bogey here is quite acceptable. There's trouble left and right here. With the ball below our feet, most likely we're gonna end up in the rubbish on the right. So I'm aiming left. I'm taking the five iron, because I'm comfortable with that club. And I'm playing well short of the bunkers. Left myself about 40 yards here. Now coming out the rough like this, you need bounce on the bottom of your club. So this is always going to be a sand wedge shot. The bounce helps the club come out of the grass, taking the ball with it. 
A 40 yarder like that isn't a particularly difficult shot to learn. Just so long as you accelerate, keep the club head moving, and don't try and lift the ball in the air. You've got 56 degrees of loft, the ball will get in the air, I assure you. Sometimes a golf shot is nothing more than clunking the ball with a piece of iron. And that is exactly what I'm doing here. Just using the 7 iron to knock it forward and get it to the front edge of the green. Callaway Chrome Soft again. I think I'm going to throw this ball away. I do not like it at all. Anyway, when you're in the poo like that, don't panic. Just Work out the best way of getting back onto your hole, clinically, like a surgeon. You're down here at the front of the green. This is stroke one, so it's a par six. So I'm here in three. So the par is secure. Let's see if we can turn three shots into two and make a net birdie. Now I know you're going to say, I don't hit my 5 iron straight, but you will do with the lessons and the practice. If you're uncomfortable taking this green on, then hit a 7 iron, come up short, and then chip and run it on. See, when you can only hit 190 yards, there's no point trying to paste it. So 
just swing it smooth then you'll swing it better and you'll hit it better and uh, the snowball starts to roll downhill and when you put the driver back in the bag same swing don't try and knock the cover off it first time out with the hybrid off the fairway how do you hit a hybrid off a fairway well it's absolutely no different to hitting a five or a six iron off the fairway except i haven't done particularly well there now i've got the sand wedge in my hand here i'm just going to go over this tree in front of me that seems to be a sensible way of getting back to the fairway but i think there was far too many acorns there and i clunked an acorn before I got to the golf ball but it's spatted out so we're back in business and remember we got a shot here this is a par six and the great thing is is that you can make a mistake and still get your par six Good lie in the rough, got a wide fairway. How do you hit a hybrid out of the rough when it's uh, sat quite reasonable? Well, just the same way as you'd hit a seven iron. Treat it no different to a seven iron and you'll do just fine. I got 58 to this back flag. We're on the downslope, so the ball's gonna come out lower and therefore hotter. And we definitely don't wanna go over the back. So best to err uh, on the cautious side here. Now I know you're going to say, oh, you're a single figure golfer and you're hitting it much straighter than I do. I hit fats and thins and duffs and chuffs and goodness knows what. Well, this is why we have lessons and we practice what we're taught. And you will improve quite quickly, especially when you're just using a short club off the tee. You're not losing golf balls and you're not getting in the merd so your scores will tumble it's so easy to turn a 10 into a 5 well that's the easy 9 over with I think you can see I was only in real danger twice the first on the fifth hole when I hit that odd shot out to the right looking back on it I would have probably been better off hitting an eight iron there rather than the six and of course on the par five there where I had two gambles but still managed a bogey so that was quite lucky let's go to the difficult nine now and uh, see how I manage with that it's going to be a lot harder to make bogey golf mm -hmm. 